Welcome CAD community. This is Henry McKay and I'm a fourth year city and regional planning student. I'd like to introduce my guest, Jeff Bradley, principal and president at the M Group. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jeff. Thank you, Henry. Pleasure to be here. First, I'd like to start off and just ask you, what's been your sort of broad, I guess, career trajectory um, leading up to your current role at the M Group? So as a, young, as a youngster, I really enjoyed drawing and, and building things. So at a young age, I decided I wanted to be an architect. When I applied to schools, I applied to Cal Poly, uh, thinking I'd go there for architecture. Um, but I started working at a local firm that did both architecture and planning, um, RM Design Group, they're still there. And I really found that I enjoyed the, uh, the planning work more than the architecture work. And so I, I, I switched my focus within the department from architecture to planning uh, in, my, in my second or third year and started going down the, the planning route. Um, it took five years to go through the program for me because I was you know, kind of dabbling in, in both architecture and planning. Um, and all through college, I was working at, at RM Design Group, uh, learning more, getting more and more excited about planning. And then a few years after my wife and I graduated, who was also, also a city and regional planning major uh, from 1992, um, in 1995, we decided to move up to the Bay Area and work for uh, the local cities. So I, I got a job at the city of Sunnyvale. My wife, Heather, got a job at the city of Saratoga. And we spent about 10 years in the public sector uh, doing uh, mostly development review, a little bit of long range planning, um, some redevelopment work. Um, and then in 2005, we decided to uh, leave the public sector and start our own planning firm, uh, just the two of us. And so that was, uh, that was 14 years ago. And so now we have, um, we have three offices in the Bay Area. We have about 40 uh, employees, including ourselves, and we work for exclusively public sector clients uh, here in the Bay Area doing policy planning, development review, historic preservation, community engagement, and environmental review and a little bit of urban design. So it's been a, it's been a great career path and I've enjoyed uh, every bit of it and recommend it uh, highly for the, the future graduates coming out of the program. One of the things that's kind of interesting to me about your um, career and sort of background is that you are so well versed in architecture and did that professionally and academically as well. And I was wondering how having sort of that dual, I, I know planning and architecture really go together. Um, in a lot of key ways, how, how that has affected how you plan, I guess, or how you look at planning problems compared to maybe someone from a more traditional planning environmental background. Yeah, I, I felt fortunate um, because once, you know, once I landed in the public sector, I was, I was working with a lot of development professionals, you know, architects, developers, engineers. Um, and sometimes they get frustrated with planners if the planners don't know enough about you know their world their world and what their you know realities are and what their constraints are so i always enjoyed working with architects and knowing that you know they're what it's easy for a planner to push a push a set of plans back and say well you have to redesign this you know because everything is you know six inches off and to know that you know for the architect you know, that's not a small matter. That could, you know, take a week or two <laughs> to, to redo all the, all the drawings and, and bring them back. And so having that empathy and being able to um, identify things early in the process that could, you know, help the, help the designers figure things out earlier uh, rather than later, you know, could save a lot of uh, heartache for everybody. And so I think that, that interest in architecture um, and the experience I had working with architects, you know, at, during college and and even before, I think was really was really helpful for me. In terms of like architecture and I guess planning, because that's what we're talking about. Um, anything that's really been a pivotal like um, influence of like how you think about this stuff? Yeah, I like. Um, I might mangle the names and the titles a little bit, <laughs> but it's. Um, I believe it's Christopher Alexander, and it's called a it's called a pattern language. It's a big, a big thick book out of Berkeley, I think. Um, and he was really talking about, you know, human skill design and things that, um, you know, are useful and meaningful. Um, and, that, and that just in like in small ways, you know, makes life easier and more convenient and more enjoyable. 
and it applied to like you know small scale architecture up to you know urban design level considerations and I just thought his delivery and explanation um, was very persuasive and kind of was an inspiration I think when I was uh, when I was at Cal Poly. Can you think of one project that's been really special to you that you've been involved with? One of my really first projects at the city of Sunnyvale was a um, a 10 acre uh, apartment building apartment complex that had been built had been built like in the late 50s early 60s um, and it was pretty low low scale you know one and two stories and the owner who'd owned it the whole time his family had owned it since it was built um, you know they basically wanted to tear it down and, and build it all over again uh, with you know larger taller buildings more units uh, more amenities um, and he was he was a he was a really great applicant because you know he his family had owned the property for so long you know he really wanted to do the right thing in terms of you know what the city was looking for and he had a good team of architects and landscape architects and he really let me work with his team you know sometimes applicants kind of kind of want to build a wall between the planners and the hit their their own professionals and kind of be like a filter but he was very you know very respectful of the process. You know, if he had an issue with anything that was happening, uh, he would always come to me. And then if, if he felt the need to, you know, talk to the planning director, he would always tell me, hey, Jeff, no disrespect, but I'm gonna, I need to talk to the top person about this. And mo most developers don't do that. <laughs> they, just, they just go straight to the top and you hear about yeah. it. You know, you hear about it some other, some other way. Um, it was a great experience of like what a good, you know, working relationship could look like with a project and also just having the professional satisfaction of seeing your effort kind of reflected in something, you know, real. Well, I was interested to hear how people like found themselves in planning because, you know, I'm used to planners being around planners every day now, but like before I ended up in this major, like I didn't know anyone and it is a fairly niche discipline. Yeah, it is. I think it's one of those careers that it kind of has such a low profile um and a lot of people don't know about it my good friend from high school is a middle school teacher down in salinas and one time he asked me to come down and talk to like 30 kids about being a city planner basically so i did a, a powerpoint presentation and explained what a city planner does and what uh, city planning looks like in salinas and how they can get involved um so we i do try to get the word out when i get a chance you know, for opportunities like that are there any types of like i don't know portfolios or work examples that you've seen that have been really impressive that have demonstrated like you know certain skills or like really good problem solving abilities or just really stood out to you or the like typical resume and stuff yeah i think any, anything that demonstrates um you know good project management skills mm. like if you could say you know this is a project that had you know eight people on the team but my role you know was to corral all that and you know proofread everything and keep everyone on task that's that's always a good a good sign and then also you know just the, the quality of the the graphics is yeah. is important because before you can get into the content it has to be like well is this something that draws you in and makes you <laughs> makes you want to read the content um you know just as a sample you know it's not required you know it's not required reading from my perspective it, it's you know, i want to read it but I, I want to, you know, I want to be engaged by it. And so, you know, high quality graphics, um, you know, even if it's primarily a text document, you can still, you can still tell if someone has taken the time and had the, had the, you know, the ability to make it just look good, you know, make yeah. you want, and make you want to say, oh, that looks good. Let's, let's see what it's about. Um, you know, let's, let's read for content. Um, and then obviously design skills, you know, so pe people who have good design skills, you know, you could kind of tell at a glance, it just kind of jumps off the page and it's just like, it's like really good work. That's always impressive. I think, I think Cal Poly is a great program. I'm lucky enough to be on the um, advisory committee. Oh, great. Uh, so I'm involved in fundraising for the, the Cal Poly Scholars Program uh, to, to help, uh, you know, first generation students uh, be successful in the program. I think that's a great program. I think Cal Poly is doing a great job with the, the academic and the, the training part of it. The, uh, the assessment committee that comes in and does the accreditation every few years, 
he all, always dings the, the program for not having enough diversity. I think that's critically important. Uh, it's always been critically important, but now it's really uh, uh, right up there. Um, so I think there's an opportunity uh, to do that because I think the, the people who practice planning need to really reflect the communities they work in, and we need to uh, we need to diversify as much as we can. Thank you so much, Jeff, for your time. Um, I found our conversation very insightful, and I'm sure others will as well. Thanks, Henry. It's been great <laughs> talking with you.